Thank you, Ed, for putting that in perspective. That's why it's important. I mean, what the fuck were they thinking was going to happen? What the fuck was Vladimir Putin thinking was going to happen? Here's some background on... Here is some background on Zelensky, who used to be a comedian, by the way. Welcome back to CBS Mornings. The president of Ukraine's defiant response to Russia's invasion has made him recognized and celebrated around the world. So like many of you, we wanted to know who is Vladimir Zelensky? Well, Holly Williams has got a pretty good idea because last year she spent time with Zelensky and his family in Ukraine. This morning she shows us how this former com how this former comedian became the face of a nation under siege. Ukraine's president, Vladimir Zelensky, is being hailed as a new Winston Churchill. Slava Ukraine. Slava Ukraine. Stoically refusing to leave his country, even as the bombs rain down. Sending words of inspiration to his people. But Zelensky started out as a comedian performing stand-up. He went on to make... Will they show him playing the piano with his dick? Movies. Often playing an everyman. Like a Ukrainian Steve Carell. People say Zelensky's like uh, Servant of the People uh, comedy show was like a CIA op. I don't believe that, by the way, but uh, there, I, I have heard that kind of, that, that level of rhetoric. Like people, bro, they fucking... He did the, the Servant of the People uh, fucking show that's like Veep specifically so that he could like, you know, get the Ukrainians to, to love him. Leftists think everything is CIA. Yeah, it's so funny that they... I think that is a little bit... That takes a little bit too far. Okay. Even won the local version of Dancing with the Stars and voiced Paddington in the Ukrainian version of the blockbuster no! film. Yo, are you fucking kidding me? Yo, that was Paddington. Yo, homie was Paddington. Get the fuck out of here. And and voiced Paddington in the Ukrainian version of the blockbuster film. He created and starred in a hit comedy series about a Ukrainian high school teacher who improbably becomes president. And that led to Vladimir Zelensky, at age 41, improbably becoming president in real life winning more than 70% of the vote. Damn, his wife is hot. Good for him. His wife is taller and hot. These are, this is... His campaign platform was bringing Ukrainians together and fighting corruption. Last year, we were given rare access to President Zelensky as he visited the front line in eastern Ukraine, where they've been fighting Russian-backed separatists for nearly eight years. Even then, he was taking risks. I love how this doesn't explain what was his politics. Amazing. Dude, are you kidding me? They don't give a fuck about that. Why would they? What? Dude, that's, that's the other side of the planet. On the other side of the planet, there's only heroes and villains. There is no such like, is this a neoliberal? Is this a reactionary? Is this far right? Is this far left? Is he a communist? Well, I guess they always say like everyone's a communist. Usually if they want him to, to associate them with a bad guy. But that's it. Um, so fighting corruption by being named in the Pandora Papers. Dude, his level of corruption is literally nothing in comparison to uh, 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 Poroshenko or or even fucking Yanukovych, okay? So, it, come on. Or, especially Yanukovych. Like, you're, you're ridiculous for saying... Or Putin. It's Ukraine. Of course they have fucking oligarchs. And of course they're corrupt. Why are we making it seem... Why are we making it seem like th this corruption is not normal when corruption is fucking normal in America? 
By the way, uh, seventy-two percent is legit. His po his popularity was also waning though, in in past in like I think it went down to like thirty percent or something, if I'm not mistaken, uh, before this invasion. And now it's I don't know. I don't think they're polling currently, but if you polled, it would probably be fucking ninety-nine percent now. Are you saying there's zero oligarchs in the USA, bitch? Please, no. I'm what? No, I'm no, literally not saying game. that. It's like a it's almost like an Orientalist perspective. He used to shit on Poroshenko for bending for the EU back in 2017, 2018. Oh, Moldovan, Moldovan Mama Liga's back, baby. Ooh. Hi. My man, my favorite chatter. Going within 150 yards of the separatists. And they go a little bit forward to see what. Is this an answer that Clint Bandera was a hero? Wait, what? Here and. For example, the, in May, to, to they're glorifying him here. He was starting to not be well liked. No, I already I mentioned that. That's exactly what I mentioned. Like he was not. By the end of this process, it, when they interviewed him here, he was not well liked. OK, he was not well liked at all, partially because, you know, if you can't beat him, you join him. And uh, from what I understand, it's not like he was able to fucking take down corruption. Two guys were killed by a sniper. The president also went to visit his elderly parents. That's my mother. Hello, ma'am. Nice to meet you. Inviting us in for breakfast. Ladies first, I'm sorry. I'm fairly sure presidents get to go first. Surely he won't work with Nazis? In the time no, of course, of course, dude. Look, you, he, uh, he turned a blind eye. He turned a blind eye to, of course, the, the fucking Nazis within the National Guard. Uh, like I said, there, he, was, he was less overt than, than Poroshenko, but it still doesn't matter. Like, it, it's just the country has... Uh, the country, out of uh, legitimate fears of a Russian invasion or because of its own complex history with nationalism... Uh, or, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's nation building project that spans over almost fucking 200 years at this point or a hundred years, uh, uh, around, uh, like leaving the USSR has always had a history of, uh, of nationalism and, and even in certain circumstances, both on the one side fighting alongside the USSR and on the other side, collaborating with Nazis, two separate groups. It's, it's not as black and white to explain as like uh, from an American's point of view. I guess like if you were to, like Zelensky is not a Nazi. He's not. He's just a centrist neoliberal. But as a consequence of being uh, the leader in Ukraine, of course, there are, uh, there are instances where he has turned a blind eye to neo-Nazi battalions, neo-Nazi formations. But America does that as well. So, you know... It's like that. I, I want you to I want you to understand it in the same way that like it's it's the same as like the American government doing that. It's just like the most annoying thing is like he is Jewish, you know. Yeah, I do know. As a Ukrainian, okay, these are the better takes I like. Forum you about Ukraine, recognizing the historical nuance. Yeah, of course I recognize the historical nuance. Anytime you fucking hear me talk about this shit, if you don't, if people are clipping shit uh, and, and not showing the historical nuance, then that's their fault. But that historical nuance is also what makes me fear a, a rise of... That historical nuance makes me fear... Very nice people, both sides. Brain rot. Yeah, I mean, Trump did that. Exactly. I mean, so. Lose anger, be kind, be generous. What? America inspired Hitler to commit mass genocide? Wait, what? Who said that? Wait. Wait, first of all, America did inspire Hitler. I don't know if you know this. I think you're like saying that as a joke to be like, oh, everyone says America bad, America bad. And like, they'll even blame, you know, Hitler's actions on America. But like, it's literally true. 
Yeah, Hitler looked at, you know, Jim Crow laws and eugenics that was popping off in America and openly stated, like, that's some good shit. Like, we want to do that. So, so yeah, that literally true. So I don't know what the fuck you thought that was going to be, but now maybe it's time for a fucking history lesson for you, I guess. I don't No, I don't think the 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 gas chamber uh the Bracera program is not I don't know if that's real. The Bracera program being like the the uh, Zyklon B's first usage slash that's where the gas chamber inspiration came from. I don't know if that's true or not. But the the other part of it, like the the segregation Jim Crow laws being a uh a, an influence in how to uh, uh, do the racist violence for Hitler is true. America in the early 20th century was the leading racist ju jurisdiction in the world, says Whitman, who was a professor at Yale Law School. Nazi lawyers, as a result, were interested in, looked very closely at, and were ultimately influenced by American race law. Yeah. And we fucking loved uh, Hitler here, too, by the way. Uh, 30,000 Nazis literally marched on Madison Square Garden. I don't know if you know this or not, but the American Bund movement was very, very successful. Uh, so, you know, just uh, another thing to consider and another thing to remember, I think. America first is what they were claiming, those Nazis uh, at the time. In 1933, Madison uh, Nazi March. Yes, you can literally pull footage from YouTube. Yup, yup, yup. We enjoyed. An I've heard Americans were behind the Maidan coup revolution. Thoughts? No. Yes and no. Here is what's annoying about the way that we respond to color revolutions here, or the way we understand it. It's either it's all America's doing. Or it's all fucking, uh, you know, propaganda and it's like a genuine civil uh, society revolution. What's frustrating about this is the nuance gets lost in these conversations all the time. Let me explain. The Euromaidan protests were originally 1 million percent, okay, whether as a consequence of propaganda or whether it was like legitimate and genuine, were absolutely created by the Ukrainian people, okay? Straight up, they did not like their, their uh, incredibly corrupt... Uh, they did not like their incredibly corrupt government, okay? And they absolutely, legitimately were very upset with the way things were going. Part of it was because of... Uh, part of it was because of, its, because of their refusal to join NATO. And that is true. I mean, not NATO, sorry. Uh, the EU. And that is true. It's true. You can't fucking deny that. It was so... It's so stupid. But what... But what the CIA and what State Department, what the American State Department loves doing is launch or, or take advantage of genuine momentum in a certain direction in a country and turning it into whatever the fuck they want to turn it into. Okay? If you think that there was no American involvement in this circumstance, you're a fucking fool. Okay? Absolutely. Like, oh, just John McCain was just simply going and hanging out with like Svoboda people uh, the, the nationalist party, the far right nationalist, uh, neo-Nazi filled party for, for no, for no reason. They were just hanging out and taking photos with, uh, fucking, they were hanging out and taking photos with fucking, you know, the Azov battalion for no reason. That was just, it was just for funsies. Okay. So of course there was, there was, uh, a, a tipping of the scales there. 1000%. There was a tipping of the scales there, absolutely. Okay. Ukraine is a very big simplification oligarchy with a democratic facade. Politics are not black and white. My grandma's, bi my grandpa's business was forcibly taken him, uh, from him by Yanukovych's circles. Svoboda is rumored to have been created by Yanukovych himself as an easy opponent. Victoria Newland was handing out biscuits. Law. I mean, yeah, there is a, there is a. There is a fucking reason why, uh, you know, so many, so many people were, I mean, here, the United Sec uh, States current uh, Secretary of uh, Political Affairs for the United States, Secretary of State for the Political Affairs of the United States, Victoria Newland. Um,
This is what a lot of people point to as well. As far as like what the what the legitimate and genuine protest against a corrupt government turned into a legitimate and genuine protest against a corrupt government turned into a incredible opportunity incredible opportunity for uh for for uh, America to utilize this protest in Ukraine as uh, and and insert themselves into the situation or had inserted themselves into the situation leading up to this uh, and and use this as an opportunity to build momentum and uh but Christian Science Monitor, don't they? Aren't they fucking legit? Why are you guys saying Pepe the Christian Science? Don't they like weirdly have good ass articles? Am I crazy? No, they are. They're legit, guys. What the fuck? Christian Science Monitor is like actually. I I, I originally thought that it was fucking bullshit too way back in the day because it's just like christian science monitor what the fuck does that mean no they they actually have like really really good fucking uh media yeah as legit as nine gag what the fuck you're just you're you're actually you're seeing christian science and you're judging it which is understandable you're but the same with buzzfeed news like buzzfeed news actually does really good reporting what is it? All sides media bias rating center. There you go. Hey, the Christian Science Monitor has maintained its reputation within the news industry as a well-run, high-quality news organization with minimal bias. If these motherfuckers are saying that they're a centrist uh, and reputable, uh, a, a reputable institution, I don't know what to tell you. You have Christian science writers who are fans of you. I know them. Fuck yeah. Anyway, now that we have uh, recognized the integrity of Christian science monitor, um, the authenticity of a YouTube recording of assistant secretary of state, Victoria Newland on a call to the U S ambassador isn't confirmed. It sure sounds convincing. A tape uploaded to YouTube on February 4th appears to be a confidential conversation between assistant secretary of state, Victoria Newland and U S ambassador to Ukraine, Jeffrey Piat. What do you think? Uh, I think we're in play. Um, the the uh, you know. Anyway. An early morning brandy. Do you prefer politics or comedy? Comedy. His father Alexander told us, saying he worried too much about his only child. Vladimir Putin said he launched this bloody invasion to rid Ukraine of Nazis. A strange claim when Zelensky is Jewish and says his grandfather fought against the Nazis with the Soviet army. Now Ukraine is in peril again, and the country's unlikely leader has emerged as a hero. It's truly, truly awful. Even getting Hollywood's attention at an award ceremony so Sunday. Much. We have a fellow actor in Zelensky who deserves some credit tonight for fighting the fight. But Vladimir Zelensky has left showbiz far behind. He's found a new calling, helping to galvanize his people and winning the admiration of a world horrified by Putin's attack on Ukraine. For CBS Mornings, Holly Williams. It's wow. amazing that Holly was able to do that a year ago, so we got to see him up close and personal, just to see him in the bathroom washing his hands. Yeah. Yeah. So usually sitting there with his mom and dad, this is my mom. But the best line I heard him say recently when the U.S. offered him a way out, he said, I don't need a ride, I need ammunition. Yeah, well, his ability, his communication skills turned out to be very central to this fight where disinformation and misinformation is so important. Uh, I like the description of him as being the Ukrainian Steve Carell. I yes. hope Steve right. Carell hears that and gives him new perspective oh. into what's going on there. And there's a very cliche line that presidents throw around all of the time. Mm -hmm. It's, I'm a man of the people. Yes. But he really he is. is, he embodies that. And you can see that he's authentic. 
and the people have embraced them. The world has that embraced so them. We support Nate. Ukraine. Yeah. I was yeah. talking to a woman from um, Ukraine the other day, and she said before this happened, he got mixed reviews, but now everybody, everybody is solidly, of course. I mean, this is literally true, by the way. Uh, Vladimir Putin's uh, doing, by the way. What a what a what a gift. Gone. Let me work on what a gift to America and the Ukrainian people, I guess. Let's go. None of this justifies Russia's invasion of Ukraine. None of this justifies the As flex. Uh, none of this justifies the the horrible uh, one million plus refugees trying to survive, trying to escape. One million people have been displaced thus far. Send soldiers to not fight Lamau? Wait, what do you mean? Oh, 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 on the polls. Yeah, the USA president is always opposing EU armed forces. Even CNN in 2004, they made a thing called the EU a threat or an enemy in the US because of the Lisbon Treaty and the Euro.